the wine personality to our series. This is a program designed to bring to the fore professionals we believe are making changes to the mining and petroleum industry across the West African South region. You know, we want people to see who they are, what they've accomplished for younger generation of professionals to emulate as a broader part of industry personality. Jack is a remarkable personality. He's been around for such a long time, has seen several jurisdictions across several deposits. In fact, I think he, he's a master at what he, he does. And he is someone most of us always look up to as far as the industry is concerned. We're going to have an interesting chat as always. And I believe you sit back, relax, and enjoy the session. Chief, thanks for having us. Thank you. You're welcome. As a usual, we want you to tell our viewers about yourself and how you ended up in the mining industry in the first place. Okay. So, as you already said, um, the name is Justice Fountain, popularly uh, called Jav. Um, I started my education in the coast. Actually, university primary, and then went to St. Augustine's College. So I'm a proud absolute. <laughs> yes. And uh, so from there, four one to upper six, and then went to School of Mines. Uh, how I got into mining, um, that's a story for another day. But <laughs> just give you a little bit. I had a senior who was in school uh, who actually went to the School of Mines. Uh, he was three years ahead of me, so I was in the one way, in sixth form, lower six. He was already a student. Yeah. So on one of his visits back to the school, he talked about mining, you know. And that's where the interest came. I knew what I did want to do, mechanical, yes. electrical, yes. but reading the maths uh, in a sixth form, it had to be a, some engineering course. Yes, yes. yes. So once he talked about mining, then the interest came that, okay, yes, that's, if I don't like electrical, I don't like all those ones, then yeah. yes. So that's how I, I got to know about mining. And the attraction is also the well paid uh, yeah. job. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I remember the first time I met you was um, around 2006. I think doing one step at once and then you into you. Yeah. I mean, by then you had come. Uh, I mean, you had accomplished something no. then. But should I even go back further? When you got in, when you look at coming this far, um, because in two thousand and six we were already yes, uh, two thousand and six I was at uh, Wasa yes, at yes, as yes. the uh, yeah. my planet superintendent. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. So yes, I mean. I've been to, I mean, I started working in Owasi um, from School of Mines, Owasi, uh, stayed in Owasi for about two and a half years, and then was transferred to I Am Free when the AGC took over um, I Am Free. Uh, worked there for about a year, and then uh, joined Abosu, and Abosu started. Yeah. So I was in Daman for about four years as well. And then I uh, did a small stint in the before I traveled outside to, to the UK to do my master's. Then I go back, uh, you know at that time the gold price was uh, depressing. Yes. Yes. Everyone had to find something else to do. <laughs> so I went back to study, um, do my MBA. Um, at the point I wasn't so sure, because we never knew what the industry was going to go deep. Yeah. But I, after I completed, that was in 2004, I got a call that uh, Wexford was mm -hmm. someone yeah. was coming up again. So um, I was actually then teaching in the UK. Mm -hmm. But I had to make a decision. Do I want to go back to the industry or do something else? But I think I, I made the right decision to come back. Uh, that's when you, uh, you met me. Yeah. So, yeah. So, We've gone through all the technical bits, some of the operational aspects, uh, and uh, yes, I was uh, enjoying my work. Um, then after Wasa, I uh, got the opportunity to go to Australia uh, to work with 
favorite team too. So I stayed in Australia for the last six years. And then in 2013, finally I came back home with New Yeah, but where, where do you think you were going when it all started? Yes, I mean, um, from where we started, I mean, Obwasi and then where people were. Yeah. You know, Obwasi was quite hierarchical. Yeah. Yeah. GMs and looking at where some journal yeah. was. Yeah. Uh, we never dreamt. <laughs> I mean, we were just wondering how long is it going to take us to get there. You know? uh, it wasn't easy, but it was not about really thinking I want to get to where some journal is, but to be the best I can. I mean, to help the industry, train people, uh, get more people enjoying what they do, especially in the mine, engineering space. So, um, not that I had any specific idea that I wanted yeah. to be, and to say that I haven't got there, but I think where I am, um, I'm contributing what I can um, to the industry. What are some of the most important highlights in the area? Ah, some of the most important highlights. Um, I would say my time in Wasa, because that was a big step for me. I mean, as a my planning superintendent, and then um, working under uh, Harry Tando, the late Harry Tando. It was one of the best times. Um, I had other friends in the uh, finance area, and Wasa was a small company yeah, yes. then, yes. but um, we had Bogosu as well as a sister company. And I quite remember um, we were asked to put our budget together, you know, and uh, I, have a, I had a very good friend who I worked with in Daman. He also joined us in uh, Wasa. And we managed to put a budget together, I mean, spreadsheets, <laughs> you know, with all these focus <laughs> Do the mind plan, but he's the finance person, so the plan should flow into yeah. the cost yeah. yeah. And so you need to have a very robust spreadsheet to do that. And uh, when we had the um, senior leadership team from the US yeah. to review our budget, um, they were impressed with the spreadsheet that we developed, you know that it helped us to, what if scenarios, what if, so if we change this, what happens to the whole mind plan, you know, and it was easy, the fiscals were there, yes. but then if you change anything else, what happens, yeah. and it was just flowing, and uh, that was a big thing, uh, because when they went to Bogo, so it was, you know, I yeah. meant to say, but not to that yeah. level. Yeah, and uh, that was one of the highlights of uh, my career. I mean, yeah, developing that spreadsheet uh, for that integration between the planning and the business. Yeah. Now, obviously, coming all this way with the various problems as it hasn't been easy. Mm -hmm. It's not easy for a professional to achieve this. What was pushing you on? Yeah, one is my family. Mm -hmm. My family. I mean, um, some of us came from humble backgrounds. Yeah, you know, so, uh, important thing is to achieve something for the family, you know, not for them to go through some of the difficulties that they went through. But the other thing is to get other young people because what I went through in terms of learning mine engineering. You know, those were the days that we had to do things uh, with uh, uh, these computer programs. Uh, yeah. Fortran. Yeah, Fortran. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And uh, some of the programs we were using then, you have to... Yeah, Fortran. It was not easy. I know. <laughs> you know. But then I had some good mentors too yeah. who helped me, even though the training was, the learning was difficult. Um, it was a time of the transition between moving from doing things manually, like yeah. designing pits with your free hand, not computer. Yeah, I'm <laughs> Using ruler, scale, <laughs> ruler, <laughs> to design a pit. 
And uh, I'll give credit to Mr. Stephen Osemen. Yeah. <laughs> I went and I him in a I am free. <laughs> and he gave me that skill, you know. So it was a transition between the manual films and then the computer. Yeah. So we understood how it's done. Yes. And then how what did the computer is doing. So it, it was easy to pick up and say, no, what is coming out is all right. And today you can have engineers who just because it's coming out of the computer, yeah. that's, all, that's, that's good. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> haven't had that. Uh, one of the things I'm enjoying is able to impart yeah. the knowledge to the young ones for them to, you know, um, understand that it's not just all about the computer, but there's something going on behind the computer. And, uh, if you understand that, yeah, it's better. Because a computer is a program, it's just an aid. Yeah, you know? yeah. Whether it's Vulcan, Semba, yes. whatever, you go to some other place to learn. Yeah. But the thinking behind what you're doing. I'm guessing it's from first. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. And I enjoy um, doing that, imparting that knowledge. Um, yeah, because we're having a close personal chat with Jeff, with Justice Fenton. He's a mind manager, he wants a same site. And that believes that as professionals, we need to achieve the best we possibly can to push the industry. We also need to go all out to achieve and set new targets always. And then we need to have close family ties and make sure we are leaving something behind for our families. He believes there is a need to have mentors at every stage of the journey. And as a professional, you should always be prepared to impart knowledge to the young ones. Yeah, for him, do you have any specific approach towards industry sustainability? Especially now. Yes, I think um, now um, with, there are a lot of challenges. Yes. I mean, community pressures, yes. uh, even our own uh, from internal in the workforce. Yeah. And uh, everyone is worried about is this going to be sustainable? How yeah. long? Yeah. Um, I got some a guy approached me this morning, one of our workers, junior yeah. workers. Um, we are upfront, telling them when this mind is going to end, yeah. unless we find something that's yeah. you know. And so being upfront with them helps them to plan. Yeah. We know this resource at some point is going to finish. Yeah. Even though it might continue, but economically, yeah. yes, we see mines being around yes. for a while, changing yes. hands. Yeah. But we have to manage the resource. So, you know, we have to manage it. And it, some of us in, in our positions help to drive that. Uh, not to go chasing hybrid. It, it's important, but the whole strategy should be put in such a way that if the mine can last, it helps not only the workers because we get salary, it helps our families who depend on us, but then the community at large, exactly. and, um, the, company, the country as a whole. Yes. We continue to pay taxes, yes. not just corporate tax, but pay as well. So, um, but it's important we don't lose sight of the environment, you know. Yes. Because the environment is like your sink. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, all the rubbish, everything goes in there, but it's the same place that you think that was left. Okay. okay. So we need to be mindful of the uh, environment. Uh, but mice must be take cognizance of the communities that we work in. Now, there's, um, you cannot go anywhere and just operate. We talk about the social alliances, but people are now aware. And the awareness is there. And uh, the pressures of employment. We'll have to deal with that. We have to find uh, strategies around that. And if that was Probably the next question I was going to ask you, your thoughts on local content, gender diversity as far as the industry is concerned. 
Yeah, I mean, um, let me first take the uh, local content. I mean, here we are, which I think other mines are also doing the same, working with communities yeah. and having some um, employment quota. Yeah. Here we have the north, uh, the west side, and then the, we have the east side. Communities, we have about 10 host communities. Yeah. And there are people in the west and there are people in the east. And you get complaints that oh, we, we, the west say they are being managed yeah. right. Yeah. So you yeah. need to balance it. Yeah. Even though you say it's all the communities, it doesn't matter where they are coming yeah. from. But you need to yeah. take that into account that there's always, still there's always that yeah. east, west, or yeah. whatever it is. Uh, you have to balance it. The, the other thing that we need to look at also is, and that comes to the uh, diversity and inclusion. Not that diversity and inclusion is only about female, male, that's not the only one. But that is key. There's religion, there's race, there's yeah. all those things. But more importantly, it's, it's about people in the industry or people in the workplace feeling they are included in decision making. Yes. Or they can have the chance to participate in anything. Imagine you are in the office with people and for some reason you exclude some others. You don't invite them to meet you, so if there's information they have to know and then you don't pass them. You are excluding them, that's not inclusive. So sometimes we take that inclusion to be a male and female. But that's obvious. I'm not against that. We're supporting it. And we have a lot of females in our team, in the mining team. We have female operators. Um, we have many engineers, geologists, we have a lot of them. Uh, the area, the other things that we're trying to bridge that gap is to encourage females in the communities. Because when we do the local, local, you get mostly males. But we are trying to put in programs that can give the ladies the confidence. Yeah, to come out. Yeah, so that when we advertise for jobs, which is not only cargo operators, it is not only males, yes. so that females can have that confidence. So we are devising some kind of a pop up program um, to help them give them that confidence, so that when jobs are advertised, yes, you can get more females to apply. Because that's where you have to start. Yeah, yes, I very much agree. That's where you have to start. Because if they don't apply, then you cannot select. Them. Yes. So yes. when you have more females applying, then obviously you can increase the number. So that's my, uh, the company's position, I support that, and that, that's what we're doing. But I think um, if I look back in our days, when we were in school, we were really one female. Yeah. <laughs> Today, there are a lot of females, but I still really think that they are not, it's not 50-50. No, it's not. It's not 50, 50, 50 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So probably that's where we need to go to. And uh, well, how do we start? We need yeah. to go to the secondary schools. Yes. And yes. Get people interested in yeah. engineering yeah. from there. Yes. So that they can apply. Yeah. Then we they can feed the industry. Yeah. And then we'll get the numbers. That's very much. So. Yeah. Yeah, because we're still having a close chat with that is the mine manager for Newmont at the mine. And Jeff believes that as a broader part of natural sustainability, we need to be upfront and manage the resources we have very well. And it's very important not to lose sight of the environment. Let's be mindful always. And recognize the communities we work in. They are the key to our success. Let's also inspire, encourage and inspire female professionals to come into the industry. Professionalism and professional development of industry. Let's let's look back, look back again mm -hmm. from way back in time yeah. to now. Are we getting there? Are we getting anywhere in the international standards as far as professional is concerned? Yeah, it's it's, it's 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 a tough one. I mean, today, I mean, um, we have a lot of uh, professionals working outside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I take myself working in Australia for all yeah. those years. Yeah. And as a member of OZI, mm -hmm. and there are a lot of um, professional development courses yeah. Yeah, you are open to. Yeah. And um, when you are a member of those societies or associations, uh, like um, 
being a competent person in terms of the mineral reserves, yes. resources, the credentials. I think that's the next level that we need to get to. Yeah. But that's what we need to work up to. Yes. And if we can have that, then we won't have people just rushing to the numbers of Ozyme, yeah. SME. Yes. yes. So that's, but I think we've come a long way. Yeah. Initially it wasn't, we didn't have people, we yes. didn't people, but now we have a lot of competent people. Yeah. But I think probably we need to bring those experiences to help widen to yeah. get to that next nice yeah. so That's um, my take. The state of the industry over the years, still talking about professionalism and industry international standards. Are we near the international standards? I mean, look at the various hubs, you can look at Australia, for instance. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Um, and look back yeah. you know, where we are now. I think we're, we're, we're getting there, I mean, because the, a lot of these uh, knowledge and skills are transferable. But has the standards changed? The standards, I think, have improved. Okay, the standards have improved. Um, standards have improved. So there's no question about that. But um, yeah, I think um, initially, like I said when I went to Australia, I mean, you go there and um, the question was why do they go all the way from Australia to Ghana to pick somebody? You know, but so you're expected to prove yourself. Yeah, prove yourself. And uh, once you learn those habits here, or those traits, when you are out there, you can demonstrate. And yes. There are a lot of people. Yes. Um, some of us were, we set some yeah. standards yeah. for them that now when people go, they don't look down. Yes. You know, say, oh, this person was here and he delivered here. We can trust here. And that's, that's the sort of thing. But in terms of whenever we learn those things, we need to bring them back here. Yeah. And if I take new one for instance, once you want to have standards, it doesn't matter where the site is. We might have a local culture and all yeah. of that. But integrity, there's no cultural barrier to that. No. No. It doesn't matter which culture no. you come from. You know? So once a company set up those systems, it doesn't matter where they operate. If the standards are the same, I mean, what we are trying to do is if you visit a Nevada mine or if you go to a mine in Australia, a yeah. remote mine, how they operate is the same that we should be operating there. Yeah. So in that case, whatever standards, professionalism, yeah. we have to demonstrate yeah. that same thing. And uh, for me, one of our core values are the same. It doesn't matter where you go. Safety, integrity, of responsibility, sustainability. All those um, values, we exhibit them. And it doesn't matter what profession you are in. So yeah. long as you are a new model employee, you have to demonstrate it yourself. And so, I think our uh, standards are gone up, you know. Um, whether it's catching up the country mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's a difficult thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, was one of the things I want to talk about is ethical behavior. Yeah. Yeah. Ethics. Because professionals you have to be every professional there must be ethical behavior. How do you behave? If you're a geologist and you are responsible for declaring I mean you cannot declare what is not there. Yes. Yeah. So yes. ethics, you know, um, and every profession should have its own ethical yeah. Yeah. Uh, standards and whether we can let it get to the whole country is another thing. But um, within the company, the companies are doing it. And as we socialize, we get to know what things are happening in other companies. We bring it up and uh, we, we implement them. Yes, of course, we still have a very close chat with Jeff. My manager, new moms, a chance of mine. And Jeff believes that as professionals, we need to be sincere, we need to be responsible, and also have a high sense of integrity in everything we do. 
we also need to do everything according to the high professional standards that is required in the industry. And Chief, um, your current position, what are you hoping to achieve towards um, industry sustainability? Well, um, at the moment, as the mine manager here, um, our um, mission here is to deliver value to our shareholders, yes. not shareholders only stakeholders, yes. and mine responsibly in yeah. a sustainable manner. So in my role as the mine manager, we have to follow all the uh, legal, uh, the regulations, making sure that we stay within the mining regulations in terms of noise, dust, um, vibrations, those guidelines we stay within them. Okay. Um, that's the legal side of this because otherwise the inspectors come and uh, will be found wanting. Yeah, that's true. Yes. So we we are the ones who are creating the problem. Yes. And we have to be mindful of the community and those are others. Um, not building dams that are becoming uh, visually intrusive. So once we do all these things right, we don't pollute the water bodies and stuff. Then the, we have the social sectors. Once we have the social sectors, people know that we're not coming to destroy their farms and not pay them the right compensation. Then you are accepted and you can continue to print yeah. so that any new discoveries, you will have the support of the communities. And that way we can sustain the business. That's true. Yeah. So Very much. in our way, we have to look at some of the things that for me I'm looking at. But then again, I have to make sure that we're mining in such a way that we can also deliver on what we say we're going to do. Otherwise, without getting the road to the processing plant and then the money coming out, we all will not have anything. So, we have to be sure we deliver on our promises. Yeah. Whatever we say we're going to pay much to the market, we're doing that. So that the shareholders or whoever's money is in there, everybody will benefit from that. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, for me, um, from time to time, I step in and out for the general manager, attend functions on his behalf in the community. Um, it's important each time we mindful of what the challenges are yeah. in the community and what how best we can support them. And uh, some of these things um, we help in our way when we need them. I will need to yeah. if we can yeah. support, support yeah. them. Yeah. Just to make sure we are that's that good work yes. and we're consistent with this. Yes. So definitely, you are a very busy man and incredibly productive too. How are you able to manage your time to spend with your family? Okay. Yeah. So, in my role, I'm supposed to be working Monday to Friday. Family is in a crowd. I mean, and uh, I can only see them, say, Friday, 3 o'clock, normally, then I'll set off, go to a crowd, spend the weekend. Sunday, 3 o'clock, leave a crowd, and get back here. So that's, um, but it's all about. I mean, letting the family understand what you do, yeah. being truthful and being there when they need you. There are times that look, you might have a, an important meeting attend, but then a call comes through from the family, and you have to respond in that yeah. <laughs> So I've learned that. I mean, you can never say, I will call it. <laughs> You have to pick the call because yeah. you don't know. Yeah. And uh, imagine you left your wife with say, three kids, yes. and she struggles yeah. with them, yeah. maybe there's something she needs from you at that moment. You know, <laughs> if you're not there, yeah. So um, for me, that, that's the way. So any little time that I have, I spend with the family. So 
you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking, I mean, what's really been your strengths all these years? I mean, <laughs> to go through all this, <laughs> it's the same, same, it's the same. same I'm same. just wondering, what, what's been your strengths all these years? Yes, I mean, a supporting wife, you know, somebody who can stand on their own yeah. most of the time yeah. when you're not there. Yeah. But you have to make sure you provide the basic things yeah. for them. Accommodation, security, yes. very important. Yes. But we're lucky we are in an industry that I would say we are well paid, we are okay that we should be able to provide some of these basic um, things for the family and then they can empower them to carry on with their life when you are not there. But when, when they call you, when they need you, you have to respond. Mm -hmm. and I think um, our expert colleagues understand that very well. Yeah, it's, 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 it's interesting. They do yes, really they understand, do well. understand far yeah. well. So, yeah. yeah um, I haven't had a situation where there's a family issue and you say, you cannot go. Yeah. I have a supporting wife and family. And, um, that's uh, keeping me. Again, I have a supporting team. Yeah. Um, and I'll give them credit. You know, because uh, we provide guidance direction but they do the work and so uh, yeah uh, having a good team around you is uh, very very important yeah guys we have an interesting discussion with Jeff the mind manager of new modes at your mind and Jeff believes that uh, if it has to be mine they need to mine responsibly and sustainably let's do everything right for good social acceptance also be truthful and be there for your family as and when they need you. Always credit your team for doing the good work. And there's been talk of um, academia not training to the specific industry needs. What, what, what do you think is really lacking in the industry? Really. Yeah, I mean, um, in our time, I remember first year degree student, the first semester you got 10 lectures. The whole of the second semester was this format. Yeah. But don't train it, you don't know, mind. And then uh, subsequently, every long vacation, you are attached to your mind. Yeah. So, we were directly in touch with the industry and knew yes. how it is. So yes. by the time you complete school and you come out, you're already used to the system. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't think it's the same now. No. Because there are fewer minds yeah. and a lot more students. Yes, yes the numbers. And uh, not only from UMAT, Marseille, Legon, all the other universities who are providing uh, allied yeah. courses. Um, yeah. so, that's tough, I mean, but maybe for those of us who had that opportunity to be working in the industry while studying medicine, maybe we need to impress on our companies to increase the intake. Yeah. You know, what we think about, sometimes it's about cost, yes. sometimes it's about headcount. Yes. Uh, I think um, the amount of money we spend on students, on attachment, is how much I mean, can be part of the community. So I mean, compared to the gains we we'll Exactly. So that when the students know the system already yeah. before they come on. Yes. I mean, um, There's a bit of so, Yes. But I think probably maybe we need to still be in touch with the universities. So that some of us who can contribute something in terms of whether it's uh, going as a piston uh, whatever yes. 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 So, or, yeah. yeah I mean those are things that we can expose um, our young students to what we do before they get into uh, the minds so given the opportunity what would you want to see being done differently um, as I said it's not good to have a, a student go through the four-year course without a field experience. You know, 
that needs to be looked at very much. I mean, um, we need to change that. Um, give them the opportunity. I'm very, very much up here. It's, uh, I think uh, it helps. And now we are. We didn't have too many computers. I mean, in school, we were doing Fortran and stuff. When they were doing one planning software, you know. But here, when they come to the industry, it's it's loose. Yeah. yeah. So giving them the opportunity to come and experience some of these things will help with their studies. You know? What's the message you want to send to professionals, young professionals, students pursuing programs? Um, towards industries as well. Yeah. yeah. The, the one advice I think um, I do see a lot of young people it's good to have aspiration. It's good to have that um, dreams that you want to be. Because you come in and you see me sitting here as my manager and you want to be in my position. But um, are we really ready to put in the hard work? What I see is we have a lot of young people coming in and in no time they want to be yeah. up there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, they want to be up there quickly. Um, there's nothing wrong, but you need to ground yourself, understand your yeah. hope. Yeah. Um, but sometimes I feel they're like coming up, oh, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this, so I think I'm ready. Um, I think um, that's my advice that they have to, uh, as I said, there's nothing wrong to aspire, but learn the basics. You know, go down and uh, learn. And nobody can take it away from you. Because if you're not careful, you, you might be put in a position and you might think, oh, okay, your job is just to manage people, get people yeah. to work. But at some point, you will be found out. Yes. If the people don't know and you have to direct them. Um, but otherwise, I think once um, we humble ourselves, we go to the industry and we prepare to learn, then yes, we can have that continuity. We always want to have people set the pipeline. We need skilled people. Yes. You know? yes. We need skilled people. Yes. Um, it's good these days, we don't have a lot of expertise, unlike 10, 15 yeah. years ago. Yeah. You know, so as people are ready to learn and demonstrate that they can do the job, then we don't need to bring out the expertise. Yes. And we can sustain the job. I mean, we need to get to the point where people are doing feasibility studies and everything is either bolder or some mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. people as well from outside. But can Ghanaians team up mm -hmm. to consultancy groups yeah. to be providing some of those services? That's for me where I think uh, yeah. we need to be uh, looking at. So what, what do you do? I mean, when, when you're not thinking about production, and <laughs> looking at the numbers, <laughs> you get watching <laughs> soccer. <laughs> when I used to play soccer, yes, uh, I was a very good footballer. So um, I know some people will come after me, but I love my United. <laughs> <laughs> we are not my United. <laughs> we still have a close episode just with Jeff that, that is printed, the mining manager of Newmont at um, a church site. And Jeff believes that professionals, up and coming students, etc., we need to have dreams and aspirations and prospects as um, professionals, future professionals. Be prepared to put in a lot of hard work. Be ready and prepare yourself for higher positions. Get down to the basics and go to the nitty gritty of the first principles. So there's some um, at this point we want you to talk to our viewers. What what is it about you? Is there anything at all about you that will surprise them? <laughs> <laughs> about me? Yeah. <laughs> that you're hiding, you're hiding for everybody else. <laughs> no. <laughs> for those who know me from school, yes. Um, I used to be the sports secretary. Yes. You know, yes. And we institute the blasters. Oh, I see. <laughs> we institute <laughs> the blasters of campus. Uh, <laughs> the Jamal group. Yes, yes. We instituted that. But at the time, it was purely for 
you know, when we go for sports yeah, and stuff, yeah, and entertaining yeah. on campus. There's a huge deal now. <laughs> I know. But we, we actually started incubated it, you know. And um, we had the first university games in Tapa. Yeah. We used to have the Kuna Time yes, games. Yes, yeah. Now it's now Queen Bank. Yeah. Yes, but that's how we started. Yeah, from Attack. And uh, the first one was in Kumasi, so then yeah. I won. And then the third one in Tapa. I see. It was a Absolutely. pure Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you might see me. Yeah, I mean, nobody will think about this. Yes, but yes, those who know me know me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I would like to see you explore new. Exploring on that new fields in the future. Yes, yes. Yeah. I mean, um, so long as we have life, we tell God we have life, um, we'll take it a day at a time. But at this point, obviously, the next level, uh, my manager, next level is, yeah. well, we we'll wait and see. Yeah. But we're not stopping. Um, yeah. We'll continue to, those who come under our wings, we we'll develop them, we we'll train them. Yeah. Um, but, we we'll make sure that the business succeeds. Yes. And so when if that is satisfactory to the bosses, yes. Who knows? Um, given the opportunity, I mean way back, would you still have gone in for my engineer? I'm not sure what I would have done. <laughs> I'm not sure what I would have done. But for what you don't know, I nearly wouldn't have been a mining engineer. Yeah. Mining student. <laughs> Why? In our time at the Dakwa, yeah. you have to go for interview. Okay. Even after you've passed, yes. you go for interview mm -hmm. and then they still select. So you can have all the grades there. Yeah. And um, I remember when I was called to go up, you know the administration, yeah. went to go up, uh, I was waiting at the, uh, what do you call it, the staff come yeah. at the entrance. And then, uh, they asked me to wait before I come in. So on the veranda, somebody was standing at the very far end and he just signaled to me to take off my glasses. Mm -hmm. So I just yeah. took the glasses yes. for him and I went in the interview. Now two years later, at the time the head of the department then who did the interview went on sabbatical leave. Right. And two years later he came back, we were in the third year. Came to the class and said, I don't remember interview anyone who puts on glasses. <laughs> <laughs> then he ran yeah, to me and said, yeah, I, get it. <laughs> no, I don't remember. You wouldn't have been in this yeah, class. Yeah, yeah. So whoever that person was, yeah. I've never had the chance to know. <laughs> because I didn't know the person. Yeah, yeah. I wish I could get the person yeah. and the person. Yeah. So it's provident. Yeah. But I wouldn't have changed it for you. Yeah. Yes, indeed. My name is yeah. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much.